Foreshadowing is a narrative device in which suggestions or warnings about events to come are dropped or planted. It's a way to hint at what is going to happen later in a story without necessarily giving it away, typically only coming to the attention of the audience once a realization or reveal occurs. It's a rather simple concept, but to do it right can be complicated. There are multiple ways to do it at multiple degrees. So we're going to look at some of my favorite examples of foreshadowing and see the different ways to do it, and what makes it so effective. Since we're handling the subject of foreshadowing, I will be spoiling individual episodes and show long arcs in this video. So here's a spoiler warning for the following pieces of content. Gravity Falls Season 1, All of Amphibia, and All of the Owl House. If you don't want anything about these pieces of media spoiled, I'd advise you go watch them, as I think they're all great. Though. If you watch my channel, you've probably already seen them. Let's start with what most would call the best example of mysteries, foreshadowing, and hidden messages in any kid's cartoon. Gravity Falls. The first episode of any show is normally expected to be a bit of a rocky start, especially when compared to the rest of the show. But Gravity Falls proved that from the get-go that it was a funny, intriguing show with a fun cast and a lot to discover about its lore. Many small things in this episode come back at a later date in some way, but I'm going to focus on the foreshadowing confined to this episode. I'm going to use this episode as an example of how to foreshadow something in the short term, only being a part of the narrative of a single episode rather than the whole show in its entirety. The episode is about Dipper being suspicious that Mabel's new boyfriend, Norman, is a zombie. He bases his theory on the journal entries in a book he finds that has gathered information on paranormal beings in Gravity Falls. He tries showing this journal to Mabel to prove his point, but accidentally flips to the wrong page, accusing Norman of being a gnome. He then notices this mistake and flips to the right page. Two minutes later, we find out that Norman is in fact a stack of five gnomes. This is an example of foreshadowing under the guise of pure comedy. This is the tactic used by Gravity Falls semi-frequently. It hints at a completely absurd idea of reality, only to reveal later that it was true all along. Comedy is already meant to be a distortion of reality to a point it seems absurd, so using it to foreshadow absurd events works perfectly, and it also makes it seem less like foreshadowing and more like a one-off joke. The Gnomes page is a great example of this. You think it's just a funny joke on your first viewing, and then on your second viewing it can still be funny because you see the characters dismissing the reality they inhabit because they think it's improbable, and so it's irony which makes it funny. This is a very short-term example of foreshadowing, however, like I mentioned, the reveal that Norman is a group of gnomes comes two minutes after the foreshadowing for it. Though within the confines of a 21-minute episode, this is fine. But to look at some more long-term foreshadowing, I want to look somewhere else. And I know just where to look. Amphibia is another show praised for its mastery of foreshadowing, and it is completely deserved. I can barely think of a single thing in the show that is revealed or brought up that was not set up previously, or something that was only in one episode and never mentioned again. Which is part of why I don't mind the episode layout as much as some other people, because I feel like everything is going to come into play later. And sometimes the foreshadowing is very subtle, not being called attention at any point in the entire show. And I have two examples of this, with the first starting back in episode 1. You were all probably aware that in episode 1, Anne's eyes flash blue during this scene, blue being the color of her calamity powers, which we don't see until about 40 episodes later. Throughout season 2, we see similar eye flashes from Marcy and Sasha. Marcy's flash green in Marcy at the Gates, and Sasha's flash red in Barrel's Warhammer. Their powers don't appear until the finale. It's a testament to how planned out the story truly was, but I think the next bit of foreshadowing might top it off in that regard. This concerns massive spoilers for the finale, so here is a second spoiler warning. Alright, so Anne infamously only has one shoe, with her right foot having nothing but a sock. This was such an integral part of her design that even after re-entering Amphibia with two shoes, she immediately loses the same shoe once more. This is seen as a joke and a fun little quirk of Anne's character design, but as Amphibia fans do, they pondered whether the shoe had any meaning, to which the creator of Amphibia, Matt Browley, said that it would eventually matter. In the finale, Anne dies, to be frank. She is able to be brought back, however, after she enlightens the Guardian. She is told that she has come back in a copy of her body, and we have reason to believe that this copy has a slight error. Her shoes have swapped. Her right leg now has a shoe on it, and the left leg is shoeless. This simply reveals that the body is not an exact copy, and even though it's a small reveal in the grand scope of things, it is amazing to think that it incorporates a minute detail that has been in her design since episode 1. And speaking of extremely hidden details, I want to bring up an Owl House Season 3 theory that, if true, will be one of my favorite bits of foreshadowing in any show. 
Something you might not realize about the Owl House's logo is that the O in Owl and H in House create Albert, Edith's staff. And looking to the right side of the logo, if you flip it upside down, we can see what looks like a snake palisman formed by the L in Owl and S in House. And the subject of what Luz's palisman was gonna be has been theorized over since last July when Hunting Palisman first premiered. A snake has been a popular theory, based on one of her first bits of troublemaking in the premiere, the multiple mentions of snakes in the first season 3 episode, and this potentially ingenious logo design work. One of the most sad pieces of foreshadowing in one of these shows that I've seen would have to be a moment I will refer to as the squeeze. Very big spoilers for thanks to them. The squeeze is referring to this very small moment at the end of Hunting Palisman. I think myself and everyone who watched this episode at most thought that this was some weird instinct Hunter had picked up after seeing Bellos do nothing to Palisman but crush them. Little did any of us know that this might have been an example of extremely indirect foreshadowing, since as it turns out, Bellos left more of a Palisman killing impression on Hunter than we all would have thought. Now, I don't think this is foreshadowing in the sense that it has been planned and hinted at since Hunting Palisman because I don't think this was planned way back then. I think that they found a moment that they could expand on, and then wrote Flapjack's death to be a twisted version of the scene that we had all previously looked over. So even if you don't have everything as planned out as Amphibia or Gravity Falls, a good writer can still make a plot that is just as cohesive and well done. And that is what foreshadowing needs, a good writer. There are so many ways you can do foreshadowing, overt and covert, comedic and kind of depressing, and long-term and short-term. It can be a very useful literary tool, making a story's twists and reveals much more satisfying and plausible. It's an interesting subject, and I would like to hear what examples you all have that you think are great. Let me know in the comments. That's all I have to say for now. Keep being good people, and have an equally great day. Bye!